Agile WAF. So the Agile WAF is about the Agile ways of working. So there is certain ways of working that we all need to adapt and adopt in order to kind of get our work done. And that's where if we talk about this in this context, there are some certain rules and principles. The first and foremost thing is that we should actually work with a purpose. So whatever we try and do in that context today is all about having a, a purpose and an intent with which we try and do the work. Because there's so many distractions, there are so many different uh, you know, places, different kind of uh, advices, resources that are available easily nowadays. It's important that we kind of prioritize and have a sense of purpose with whatever we do. And then you've got the assumed simplicity. It's all about simplicity. It's not the complexity. There's so much of complexity already in our life. We've got so much of uh, so much of different distractions everywhere. How can we make it simple? And that's where, for example, if you talk about the um, Google search engine when it came about 20 years, 15 years ago, it actually tried to bring in that sense of simplicity into the whole thing. And that's why nowadays the whole navigation behavior of people, the habit of using a product changed completely now. We're not really browsing, click, 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 and doing all that 10, 15 clicks to get to one page. Instead, we are just trying to search for something on Amazon or eBay or any of these um, e-commerce products. So it's that kind of simple, how can we make things simple? How can we simplify the, um, the, the, the complicated uh, steps? And how can we reduce this? Previously, about again, 20, you know, 25 years ago, there were so many sites offering the uh, websites, offering the e-commerce functionality where you can log on to a website and then buy a product. But then when Amazon came in, it tried to simplify the whole process into just four steps. Show the catalog, select the product, add it to the shopping cart, then check it out, give you know, payment information, billing information, and you, there you go, that's it, you're done. Whereas the rest of the th uh, sites had those complicated register, log in, and then first do this, first do that. There's so many complications, so many difficulties that they made for the customers, whereas Amazon came up with the simplicity mantra. And that's why pretty much every website now in the last five, 10 years, they have restructured their, 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 their processes and the approach to making it simple for their customers to buy some goods from their websites. And it's also not just buying, but also returning. Nowadays, it's easy to return your, your goods as well, isn't it? So it's, it's, it's making that thing simple. That's what matters, again, in the context of the e-commerce uh, website we were discussing. And then embrace change. Again, very important. Uh, we discussed at length about the importance of the, the change in our life and the, and the work that we do nowadays. It's, it's inevitable that changes happen. If you look at the current situation now, nobody expected this, the kind of change that we have, that we have been forced to um, in the last uh, few months, uh, thanks to this pandemic. But um, we had to adapt. We have got to take it. We've got to you know, embrace the changes and, and then just adapt ourselves so that we can adjust our uh, way of working, our way of living in the context of what, what is going on around. So that's pretty much what is the mantra. And that's the, that's the only way. We cannot fight it. We, there's no point actually fighting the change. And then focus on the current delivery. Don't worry. In the context of Agile, it's all about the current delivery. Don't worry about uh, next year. Don't worry about 2022, 2023. Previously, surprisingly, the, it, it's, it's most of the business plans and the organizational plans used to have like a five-year plan. So they're talking about five years. After five years, how would they see themselves? So it's the same question, I think, when we go to the interviews. One of the most asked questions <laughs> for the interview is, is where do you see yourself after five years? I mean, to be honest, uh, it, the way the current uh, trends are going, we cannot predict even what happens after the next quarter. So the entire outlook has changed. It's all about thinking short term and making sure that we have, whatever we do is, is actually kind of addressing the immediate needs. If not immediate, maybe a short term needs, not definitely the long term needs. Here, the long term nowadays has got kind of constricted to let's say one year and then medium term is about six months short term is about a month to three months that's the kind of time frames we're looking at for even for businesses it's the same concept so you should look at what we're trying to deliver now again in the context of um, 
the e-commerce mobile application that we were talking about, e-commerce um, website, we were, we were actually you know, taking an example. So with that one, so what we're trying to do is we need to look at what we're delivering by December or November. So the next three, four sprints is what we need to look at. The shopping cart functionality, the ability to add the items in from the catalog. That's about it. We don't have to worry about all the other things that could come in. The team needs to focus on this and they need to work on that, develop this, implement, test it and implement it, deliver it. That's the whole focus of the team. That's like a blinker view. That's what we do as what we call as a blinker. So we're not worried about what's happening outside. It's not peripheral view, it's just blinkered view. Whereas the product owner, the business team could obviously look at all the other things. They put the stuff into the backlog. They say, well, we need to have the payment. We need to have an integration with the third party payment uh, gateway. We need to have an order processing uh, functionality. We need to work with the suppliers. All of those, obviously, they're, they're definitely um, working on those in the background, the business from the business point of view. And that's where the backlog would really help. Whereas for the development team, when they're working on a sprint, they don't have to worry about all the other things. They need to only focus on the sprint, what is in the scope of the sprint. Let's talk about the examples again of the catalog only work on that catalog. Don't worry about anything that is the business is working on in the product backlog. Worry about the sprint backlog. Once you start the sprint, the two, three weeks, you don't have to worry about anything else. All you need to focus on is delivering that functionality that you promised, that you committed as a team.